The first ecosystem tool we're going to look at testing is Redux. Testing reducers is very important in a React Redux application. They control the central state of our app, so it's pretty vital for them to work correctly under all normal circumstances. The good news is that testing reducers is actually quite easy. Reducers are pure functions, which means that they have no internal state for us to set up. We simply have to define a current state and an action and pass those two arguments to our reducer to see if it returns what we expected it to. So let's walk through an example to show you exactly what I'm talking about here. We're going to write a test for our to-dos reducer. So the first thing we're going to do is inside this tests folder, let's make a new file called reducers.test.js, and we need to name it .test.js so that Mocha will find it with the command we're running. And then inside this file, we're going to import chai's expect, which we can use to make assertions. Import expect from chai. And then we're going to import our to-dos reducer so that we can test it. We'll say import to-dos from dot dot slash reducers. And once we do that, let's create a describe block that will contain the tests for our to-dos reducer. And for those of you who aren't familiar with Mocha, this is just kind of how Mocha organizes its tests. So we'll say describe the to-dos reducer. And then inside here, we're going to write our first test. And it's going to test that our reducer responds appropriately to the create to-do action. This is probably the simplest example for now. So we're going to define our test with it. And again, this is just Mocha's way of organizing tests here. We'll say it adds a new to-do when create to-do action is received. So in order to test our to-dos reducer here, we need two things. We're going to need a fake current state to pass as the first argument to our reducer, and a fake action with a payload to pass as the second argument. And that's all going to look something like this. We'll say const fake to-do equals text hello is completed false. And then we'll say const fake action equals type. And we're going to hard code create to do here. And then we'll add a payload that has to do fake to do. And as I mentioned earlier, the last thing that we have to define for our initial setup is the original state that will get passed to our reducer. So we'll say const original state equals is loading false and data will be an empty array. Remember that this is the structure of our to do's in our Redux store now. And now that we've defined that initial setup logic, let's define a constant that has the results that we expect our to do's reducer to return when we pass it these two arguments, our fake action and our original state. And to do that, we'll say const expected equals, and then we'll have is loading false, and data will be an array with our fake to do in it. And now that we've defined the expected value, we're going to get the actual value that our to do's reducer returns in this situation. We're going to say const actual equals to do's original state and fake action. And last but not least, we're going to use chai to compare our actual and expected results like this. We say expect actual to deep equal. It's very important that we do deep equal here. Expected. And that's really it. Testing reducers should never be much more complicated than that. We create an initial state in action and check that our reducer returns the right thing given that state in action. So if we run our tests now, by typing npm run test, we see that we now have a passing test in our test suite. Now let's move on to testing thunks. Admittedly, thunks can sometimes be one of the trickier things to test, but I think I've figured out a decent way to do so. Keep in mind that this is probably just one way to test thunks, and depending on your situation, there might be better ways to do it. So with that disclaimer, let's start off by creating a new file in our tests folder called thunks.test. .js. And then just like with our reducer tests, we're going to say import expect 
from Chai. And we're going to import our load to do's thunk, which is what we'll be using for the example, from dot dot slash thunks. And once we've done that, we're going to create a describe block. Describe. And as I mentioned, in this video, we're going to be writing a basic test for the load to do's thunk. So we'll say describe the load to do's thunk. And now that we have that, we have to actually think about what it is we want to test about our load to do's thunk. For the normal operation of our application, we basically want our load to do's thunk to do three things. We want it to dispatch a load to do's in progress action as soon as it starts. We want it to load the actual data from our server. And then we want it to dispatch a load to do's success action with the to do's it loaded from the server. So let's look at how to test each of those things. So before we actually write any tests, the first thing we're going to do here is install three new packages. You'll see how each is used in a moment. We're going to say npm install save dev sinon s i n o n node dash fetch and then fetch mock. And now that we've done that, let's take a look at how to test that our load to do's thunk dispatches a load to do's in progress action. So if we look at our load to do's function, we can see that when we call it, it gives us back an asynchronous function that takes dispatch as an argument, and it calls dispatch several times with the actions we're looking for. So what if we were to create a fake version of this dispatch function and pass it in ourselves, and then check if it had been called with the right arguments? Well, as some of you may have guessed, that's exactly why we installed the sign-on package into our project, to create a fake function that we can pass in that keeps track of what arguments it was called with. So this gives us a starting point. We're going to import sign-on up at the top of our file, like this. Import sign-on from sign-on. And then we're going to create a block for our tests. We'll say it dispatches the correct actions in the success scenario. And this is going to be an asynchronous function, since we're testing an asynchronous thunk. And then inside this test block, we're going to start off by saying const fake dispatch equals sign on dot spy. This is how we create a fake function that keeps track of which arguments it was called with. So now that we have our fake dispatch that we can pass to our thunk in order to make sure it calls it with the right actions, there's just one thing we still have to do. We have to figure out what to do with this fetch statement in our thunk. You see, for testing purposes, we definitely don't want to be sending real requests to our server, especially when we write tests for adding or deleting to-dos from the server. So we have to find a way to replace this fetch that we're using in our thunks with a fake fetch that behaves like the real fetch. Well, as you may have guessed, that's more or less why we installed the node fetch and fetch mock functions earlier. Together, they provide the exact functionality we're looking for. So here's how we use those packages. Up at the very top of our file, we have to say import node fetch, and then import fetch mock from fetch mock. And then down in our tests, we're going to go through a few steps. The first thing we have to do here is define what we want our fake fetch to return when our thunk calls it. So we'll say const fake to do's equals an array with fake objects that just have text equals one and text equals two. And since this is just a test and our thunk doesn't really rely on the structure of the to do's it gets back, we don't need to worry that our fake to do's here don't have the same properties as real to do's. So now that we have our fake to do's, we have to put a line right underneath it that says fetch mock dot get and then the URL that we're fetching from, HTTP, colon slash slash, localhost 8080, slash to do's. And we'll pass fake to do's to it as well. And what this does is when our thunk tries to use fetch to send a get request to this URL, it'll just get back the fake to do's that we defined instead of sending an actual request. And since this line here actually changes the behavior of fetch, at the bottom of our test, we have to restore our fetch to its original state by calling fetch mock dot reset. Okay, so we're getting really close to having a functional test here. We only have a few things left to do. First, we have to define exactly what we want the actions that our fake dispatch gets called with to look like. 
We'll define these as two new constants right in the middle here. So we'll say const expected first action equals type load to do's in progress. And this is because we're expecting that the first thing that our load to do's thunk will dispatch is the load to do's in progress action. So then for our expected second action, we're expecting that our load to do's thunk will dispatch a load to do success action. So we'll say type load to do's success. And then the payload for this action is going to be to do's with the fake to do's that we defined up above. And once we've done all that, we have to actually call our thunk like this. We'll say await load to do's empty parentheses and then pass it the fake dispatch. And last but not least, here comes the actual test. We have to test that our load to do's dispatch the actions that we expected it to in the correct order. And we do that like this. We say expect fake dispatch dot get call zero. This is referring to the first call that was made to our fake dispatch dot args zero, which is referring to the first argument that was passed during the first call to fake dispatch. And then we're going to say that we want that to deep equal our expected first action. And likewise, we'll do the same thing with the expected second action. We'll say expect fake dispatch dot get call one, the second time fake dispatch was called dot args zero dot to deep equal expected second action. And that's it. If we run our tests now, we'll see that our new test passes. So then, the takeaway here is that when you test thunks, you'll usually want to make sure of two things. First, you'll want to make sure that your thunk dispatches the correct actions at the right times. And second, you'll want to make sure that it makes the correct external requests. In our case, we were assured of this because the second action our thunk dispatched contained the fake results that we made our fake fetch return during the test.